If this value is false, we'll take the first item counting back, counting back, forward? No, <laughs> counting forward. Okay, so this is a class. This class is an index class, and it has two properties on it. One is how many to count by, and the second one is in what direction. And so that's all that the name, you can download the source code for index operator, that's all it has. It's, it's an index that basically says how far and which direction to start from. Which direction to start from. Start from the end, or start from the beginning. So if I wrote my own indexer, do I have to do something to support this? Um, yes. Well, no, you could not, and then you wouldn't get it. Okay, if or I you could go it. ahead and get it, and yeah. then you'd have to write it. That's correct. So the question was, so I didn't repeat the question. The question was, if I want to support this, do I have to write an index operator that supports index? Yes. If you write your own collections and it's not, you know, you haven't done this, then the answer is yes. What is the type of that last one? Is it index? It comes in as index? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The question was, what is the type? And the answer is index. Yes? The hat one, why is it not hat zero? for? Because zero would be the first element. Why is hat one... The last element instead of at zero. Yeah, this this has been obviously a significant discussion. Um, is hat zero undefined? No, because you can write the index operator. So the question was: Is index zero is hat zero undefined? And the answer is no, because it depends on you know what what you what you did. Um, I, I hesitate to say this, but. Deciding whether you want to index by zero or index by one is not a discussion that I care to get into. It turns out it's been fairly controversial over time. <laughs> but did, I mean, C sharp, they, they standardized on zero a long time ago. Right, but which is zero? Is zero the first element from the end or is zero the end? Well, that depends on whether that hat character is. Well, but th that's the point, right? Is do you want your ability to specify the, 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 the length item? Yes. So, at this point, on this particular issue, I don't have an opinion, and I'm going to tell you to go read the documents, because I can't argue one way or the other. There was a long language discussion, and they chose it is as it is, and I've decided that on some things, I'm not going to <laughs> debate the point. Um, it, it turns out it's fairly rare, but in this particular case... <laughs> Do you guys have questions? I did. So... I'm a tester, so what happens if in the third area you put in hat minus one? It'll not compile. Okay. That's well, it's why a, can't you? No, I mean you could put minus, like minus one here, but you would have <laughs> why to. Why do I have to write a second line of code just to accomplish this? It seems. Which line are you talking about? The last item equals array hat one. Why do I even have to write that? I should be able to accomplish essentially the hat one or something similar where you have last item in the yeah. Yeah, you can. That'll work. I just did this to show you. No, I don't even want to do array hat one. I want something even simpler than that. I'm not being greedy. I can be sarcastic now, but I'm not going to. So can you specify specifically what I would put between these two parentheses that would satisfy you? Uh, array dot last item. That already exists. Dot last. On some collections. But it's not very efficient. So I, I'm, I'm serious. Am I missing something? Uh... Okay, you just gonna think about it? <laughs> no, I'm not. Not. I'm not. That's, it could be. That like, could be valid. I just want to give it time to think about it. Like over here. No, over there. Yes. So you mentioned earlier with the minus one. So like in PowerShell, you can do minus one, minus two, minus three. Yes. Don't we all love love that Why? Something. So it's the minus zero is the, is the issue. I don't. I don't know the answer. Kind of turned out this is somebody does. What is the issue with minus one, or how does PowerShell handle this? Or do they not even care? If I did minus zero. So first of all, PowerShell had no precedence. So they could do whatever they like, and it came. It was so it was supported since version one of PowerShell, um, and so they didn't have the issue of how to how to go back and make sure they're not breaking existing libraries or existing index operators. And that I mean the backwards compatibility issue is, is kind of important here, because if you went ahead and said minus one and people had this this implementation, then what what would that mean? Because you can allow that today, right? Just writing minus one. The difference here is if we put minus one, it is an integer. And we're going to call the method that works, the index operator that works for integers. By saying hat, 
we're explicitly saying we're going to convert this to index, and you have to have an index, an, an index operator that takes data type index. So it's a backwards compatibility pro problem that's fairly important, fairly significant. So follow-up question, why hat? Um, <laughs> what character would you like? <laughs> <laughs> So I just uh, I, I'll say I should, I, maybe I should preempt when I give this discussion. So we could use a minus sign, but there's a backwards compatibility problem. Uh, we could use regex. We could use a dollar, but that seems kind of strange. I don't think we want dollar. So we're going to count from the end with the hat, even though the hat is the beginning of the regex regular expression. Wow, this is going to get nasty. We didn't have a good use for hat. Why don't we use it for this? Right. right? I'm just curious if I'm sure it came up. Yes, yes, of course. It was not just one hour of discussion, I can assure you. <laughs> <laughs> and most of it you can read about in the, in the, in the, uh, in the discussion on GitHub. Yes, last why, question on this. Okay. Um, the, and that's a bad question, then we'll give somebody else a chance. Why have a, like, uh, basically a true or false option on index, why don't you just have reverse index? I'm mostly curious because it seems like index will take more more space than it's needed. Uh, it should be like just an integer and pull the remote taken. Uh, so like what a, do you want here? I'm, I'm trying to understand why I have index with two parameters. Why so, do you need the, the one that says, yeah, it's an index. At the yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So the question is, why do we take two parameters rather than just one? Yeah. Well, because it turns out we could count in either direction. Remember, nobody, excuse me, no sane person is going to ever write this code. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes, but they will have to implement uh, the overload for index, for taking index, and that overload will have to have a condition on it. But you want to be able to index in both directions. So the issue is you want to be able to index in both directions. Yeah, you take integer and you take reverse index. Right? And take what? Like a reverse index. You have two classes. Tell me, oh, and different data type? Yeah. Um, so now you want me to implement the index operator three times? No, 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 just two times, like for integer and for... But I have to do it for integer, and for, for index, reverse. and for reverse index. That's no, no, three. No, no, no index, no index. Just reverse index and integer. Why, uh, why have an index with two parameters? Like, the reason I ask it, even asked about it is if you invent, implement the index and it passes you the true or false value, that means that you have to have a condition inside the implementation that will basically be a, a step in, like, an index iteration. Which you could have avoided if you initially just overloaded the So index. you're saying mm -hmm. only allowed to count one direction with index. It only counts in reverse. Yes. And then otherwise you lose it. Can I come back to that question? Oh, no, maybe I don't have the code. What the heck? Yes. Let me come back to that question because I think this might answer what you're thinking. So it turns out we have this type called span that allows us to go and select a splice or a span or a significant a range within a collection that is indexable. So I could go ahead and write range create for new index to true to say, hey, let's count backwards. Or I could take that syntax and just do that and go for to the second to last element. Yes? Or I could say, hey, go ahead and get the beginning all the way to the third to last element. Or I could say, hey, let's go two to the end. Or I'd say, what the heck, just get it all. I don't ever write this. <laughs> so we want to be able to splice, so take segments out of the collection that supports the index operator and just go ahead and get a specific selection. And this is the way you would go ahead and do it with the syntax. And you'll notice that in this case, we're taking an index for the last parameter. So how does this deal with your question of saying, can we just, I, okay, I mean, hold on your question, I'll answer in a little bit. Questions about this? Yes? How would you reverse it? Like, let's say you want, for line five, you want assert dot our equivalent new inch 654 span. You'd have to use a dot and reverse operator. Okay. We're not changing the data, we're just splicing it out. It's, Turns out this is a very efficient from a memory standpoint. 
-hmm. So we're, we're just leaving the collection that exactly where it is. Take that over and do dot reverse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay. So the question was, how do you reverse it? You use a dot reverse. Yes. So why is the range about the O is from 0 to 8? Where is the 9? How do you know the O that has the early limitation from 0 to 8? Here? The last one. Well, it turns out what's really clever about this method is I don't actually show you what the data is. Yeah. So, <laughs> it turns out it's fairly irrelevant. <laughs> the question works, why, why, am I, why am I missing 9? Well, I wouldn't, didn't actually tell you what I started with, so I can do whatever I like. <laughs> Good question, though. I was kind of worried. Any other questions? So it doesn't copy the array. So it's, it's different than like a skip and take in link, which yes. will give you a new one. Um, the question is, is this the same as skip and take? Um, it depends on the implementation for obvious reasons, right? Because you're taking this in, you've got to go implement it. So it depends on, on the implementation of, of doing this. Um, on an array, it, it's definitely more efficient uh, and, and handles the memory better. But from a syntax perspective, this is really designed to help to replace skip and take, right? The link method skip and take, that's the purpose of this, is to allow that to be more elegant, not necessarily more efficient, but it's more elegant. The efficiency is going to be determined by the implementation. I, I think the point that I'm trying to make along all of this stuff is there is nothing here that's it's all .NET, right? This code, I mean, you could write the exact same code at an IL level with C Sharp 7. We're just giving you better syntax. And we're giving you some new data types, but those new data types can be used in C Sharp 7, and you can do the same thing. So we're not changing the way the memory behaves or do anything. It's all .NET underneath the covers, all the way down. Yes? So for, uh, for this uh, syntax, I, mean, I like it, but the question is, would it work on uh, enumerable, basically, on something that doesn't implement Ibsen on its own? It will not. So the question is, will this work on enumerable? And if there's no index operator, it won't work. So, and... I have, as far as I can see, there would be no way to like edit as link does, right? Right now we do. Uh, so the question is, as far as I can see, there's no way to add it, and the answer is hold that thought. Okay, I want to go back to your statement earlier about the index and just having one type that's that's reversed. Um, I I don't have a good answer. I haven't thought about this question until you asked it. Uh, my honest opinion is I think they want the ability to pass in the index operator and count in both directions to get a single item. Uh, and you're basically saying, no, if they want a single item, they can just use integer. I hear you, and I, I haven't all thought about it in another context than that. I mean, I sort of have a point against that, which is a performance potential. You have to have go to some lens to implement a particular, yeah. you know, basically remove the if statement. Yeah. And, uh, Implementation of the yeah. Yeah. And I don't know what the official answer is. This is, again, a fairly easy thing to ask in the forums. That one, they'll probably give you the answer right away. I just don't know what the answer is. Can it's, I do it's like, hold on one second, I've got to check my time. It's 823, it's now 20 minutes, and I just, you found something I didn't know. It's like, that's a record, I've never made it that far. <laughs> Thank you. 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 And Last what would you want it to do? Right? Huh? Last three elements? Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Get it. Yes, you could do that. Sorry, I didn't understand your question. No, I understand. <coughs> Which order is it going to be to? The question was what? Which the, order? The data is going to be to 876? No, it always, starts from, it always starts from the beginning and then goes, goes up. And then Uh, just to let you know, so these are just classes. Is that big enough? So these are just .NET classes. There's nothing special about them. Range, index. Um, you can go download the source code from these, and you can start using them. But they just aren't very nice syntax. But that, those are just, they're just regular classes. Nothing special about them. C Sharp Seven is adding syntax. Um, okay, next. <clears throat> Today, we do support the ability for you to iterate over um, a collection of events, streaming, stream of events. 
okay? And many of you might have seen this, this is about, I don't know, Marty, five years ago, reactive mixture instance came out. But the idea was, how do I do link, not on a collection, but a stream of events? Okay, so reactive extension was the concept that I could do link operations on a stream of events. As events arrived, I could do dot, where, dot, select, etc. on a stream of events that came in. And of course, because it's a stream, I need to be able to do and operate on those asynchronously. You can go write this code today. Obviously, you have, need to have a definition of IAsync enumerator, but it's just a .NET type. There's nothing special about it. And you can go ahead and go I, um, I async enumerable because you're going to need an async enumerable implementation. And if you do, you can go do this, which is essentially saying, hey, as events come in, go and execute use item. That's the stream pass. And finally, when you're done, make sure you don't forget to go ahead and do a dispose because you've got an I enumerable with an I enumerate, excuse me, with a, a disposal method on it, you need to make sure you can call it dispose. If an exception gets thrown, do that inside the, the finally operator. And to do that, we'll go ahead and use these uh, data types here. Um, again, nothing surprising. Uh, I async enumerable has a get async enumerator method on, just like I enumerable does. And then we're going to go ahead and have an I async enumerable, an I async disposable, <coughs> and the life, the world is happy and good. And as long as you can make sure you don't, you write this syntax correctly, you're all set to go. Okay, you can do this today, or you can do that. Now we think that is slightly better. So, <laughs> yes. But even if when you use it, it's gone. So if you do this, then you hold all the line. Um, I didn't understand your question. I'm sorry. Like a link is like a collection. You put it fixed. Like a, if there are five events, it holds. Seven. So the question is, link is like an event, but it's it's fixed. Yes. So link is not fixed. It just is fixed for certain data types, but it doesn't have to be. You could generate if you do it. If you implement I enumerable. If you implement I enumerable, which returns an I enumerator, I enumerator can generate types on the fly as you call next. Oh. No. It, does, it does not have to be static. In fact, you know, if you're going to go implement a link method that does like a Fibonacci sequence, mm -hmm. you sure as heck hope it's not static because when's the end? <laughs> and so you would want to make sure that you can go ahead and retrieve the items as you request them, dot calculate them all in advance. And so the idea is that when you call dot dot next, or dot move, you can go ahead and get that item. And the whole, the same is true here, we want to make sure as, as events come in, we call dot use as they stream through and it's asynchronous, so we just, we just process them and order is not guaranteed. Um, it's, there's a pretty, these last, these, these features, three features I've shown you, there's a pretty good chance we will see those in you know, the next version of Visual Studio, you know, 2019, presumably, right? Not that I know anything, but um, version, t so we, sh we should see in 2019 those three features, they've got a pretty good chance. Okay, anything else I'm showing, meh, we're starting to get on the line of, I'm um, uh, not sure. That doesn't mean I'm sure about this, but I'm saying that stuff I'm not sure about. Okay. Um, what about, and this is a request, from the back, on the left. Hey, what about if we could go ahead and provide default interface implementations? Now, my first question for you is, why would you want this feature? How do you do this in C Sharp 7, or C Sharp 1, for that matter? How did we do this? Provide a default implementation for, a math, for an interface. We couldn't put it on the interface, what do we do? We subclass with an abstract class to force, you know, but it would be provide a default, right? That somebody could call or invoke or, or do something. So we subclass and we put a default and then we expect the people to derive from, from the subclass. So why would I want to go ahead and support default implementations on an interface? Multiple interfaces? Maybe? Well, but you can do multiple interfaces today. You don't have multiple inheritance. Ah, 
because you might want to have multiple inheritance, and this might be a way to provide multiple inheritance without doing multiple interfaces, which can support multiple inheritance, but you have to explicitly implement the members of the interface. Okay, so you can do multiple inheritance today like, you can do like multiple inheritance, but it's kind of gnarly. That's not really what a very motivating factor. It turns out we've survived without multiple inheritance for a fairly long time at this point. Uh, not, not very compelling. What would be another reason why you might want to have a default interface implementation? If you obsolete some uh, old method, you want to obsolete it, but uh, in the meantime, new fields, uh, you simply want to call from obsolete method that compile, let's say, first name, so, so last we, name into full name. You want to obsolete an old method, but you're still going to have to have the method. And the interface is still there, and they've already implemented it, so it's there. If they used it, um, you know, write a new interface. What's the, you know? Um, well, actually, I think you're, uh, depending on when you have, when, what kinds of uh, subclasses you're using, but it's easier just to have the code in one place that everybody's going to implement if it's pretty much going to be the same yeah. code over and over again. So the so way we fun. do this today is we write an ex a class, and we give you a class. So there's I enumerable, and then there's I default, I mean, there's default enumerable. Like I'm making stuff up. Right? Right. Yes? Well, I mean, it's easy when uh, your interface provides methods that could be implemented, uh, like one of them can be implemented as a combination of other ones, and uh, you want to provide the default implementation for everyone, but if they want to make a more performance version, I don't know, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so the, the response is, hey, but this allows people for your existing class to go ahead and have a default implementation. Essentially what you're saying is, I don't want to force people to have to write another class that implements my NF files that they then derive from. Just give them a default implementation. Now, on their own, these are not compelling reasons for me to change the language. Let me just describe how hard this is. For us to do this, we have to coordinate our release of C-sharp with the .NET CLI release because it turns out in, in IL, you cannot support uh, default implementations on interfaces. They aren't supported. So we now have to get